What do you imagine when you hear the word troll? You probably imagine an anonymous internet commenter, or a shock jockey, or a partisan hack. You probably don't imagine the Senate Majority Leader, or the Speaker of the House of Representatives, or the Chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. But maybe you should, because if the past few months of batshit political coverage have shown us anything, bombshell accusations, missing text messages, secret society, secret memo, one hell of a conspiracy that does go deeper than Watergate, or doesn't answer than at all Watergate. by any means. It's that trolling is now the work of serious politicians. We begin tonight with the unraveling of a conspiracy theory. This one was created and promoted by elected officials on Capitol Hill. Trolling has been used to refer to a lot of different bad behaviors, but at its heart, it means deliberately provoking someone in order to bait them into overreacting. Milo Yiannopoulos does this all the time. He says something he knows is ridiculous. I find AIDS quite funny. And then smiles as the audience freaks out. Oh. But because I don't want to spend a whole video talking about Milo, let's use a different example. Let's use Charlie Brown. What? Just go with me. You've watched this scene a million times, right? Lucy promises to let Charlie Brown kick the ball. Charlie tries to kick it. She pulls it away and he falls flat on his ass. This scene is basically trolling 101. The troll baits their target. I'll hold the ball and you kick it. The target gives the desired reaction. It's time I'm gonna kick that football clear to the moon. And then the truth is revealed. <laughs> The troll was just leading them on. What does this have to do? I'm getting there. So how would this formula work if you were trying to troll a major news network? First, you need the bait. Promise reporters you have some big bombshell they have to pay attention to. By Republican lawmakers claiming they have documents. Classified memos. Secret memos to prove widespread abuse by the FBI. What I read today is as bad as I thought it was. The entire Mueller investigation is a lie. Then you get a reaction. Days of wall-to-wall -wall news coverage about what might be in your super for secret memo. A secret memo at the center of an extraordinary clash. We don't know what's in the memo. As a journalist, I want to see what's in the memo. Should that be released? Should the public see that? Have you decided if you'll release the memo? Why not it's allow people narrative. to look at it? Um, you read the memo. I read the memo. And? Well, obviously I can't tell you what's in the memo. So I can't discuss what was in the memo, but I can tell you the American people need to see it. And then the reveal. Your big bombshell turns out to be a dud. The memo has now been released. This memo is a dud. A complete dud. It doesn't say anything. It calls into question in the wider Mueller probe. It overpromised and underdelivered. The revelation is precisely the opposite of what they wanted to reveal. And news networks have to explain to their viewers that the scandal they've been following for days was actually nothing. They build it up, they build it up. It's and then it's about and nothing. Then it's nothing. This is what all the hype was about? Now at first glance, this story has a happy ending, right? The truth eventually came out. But if you view this story as a giant troll, it looks very different. News networks spent days telling audiences that a huge scandal could be brewing. Millions of people read headlines about the FBI potentially being corrupt. And Republicans got to go on TV and tell their supporters that they're right to be suspicious of the Mueller investigation. I'm, I'm good with the memo coming out because it exposes the FBI coming after a political opponent. Uh, okay, it's not an answer to my question. The beauty of trolling is that the truth doesn't actually matter. When Lucy says, This time you can trust me. See? Here's a signed document. She knows she's lying. And she knows she's gonna get caught lying. When Charlie tries to kick the ball, he is literally fact-checking her. Ah! But the point isn't to be honest, it's to provoke a response, to get Charlie to try and kick. Or in the case of the Nunes memo, to get the media to overreact. The juice better be worth the squeeze on this one. This is like six news cycles now. Well, I'm, I'm excited to find out what's in the memo. And though we typically think of trolling as something people do for fun, in politics, it has way scarier consequences. For one, it's a great way to distract the news cycle away from serious stories. The same week that Nunes started talking about the memo, the New York Times reported that Trump had seriously considered firing Mueller. Look at which story dominated cable news chirons. But it's not just a focus problem. This kind of trolling works because audiences remember negative information even when it's been debunked. Political scientist Emily Thorson ran an experiment where people were exposed to a piece of negative political information and then saw a correction. And she found that people's attitudes towards the target of the lie got worse even after the lie was debunked. She calls this belief echoes. And that's when people are given a full, clear correction. Most casual news consumers won't get that.
that. Or if they do, they'll see headlines like this. Republicans release secret memo accusing investigators of bias. Memo released alleging FBI cover-up. Or chirons like this. Memo says FBI abuse surveillance power. Even after the lie is revealed, it's repeated in news coverage. The result is a news environment that incentivizes bad faith, that rewards politicians who are willing to commit to a lie. And so you've seen more and more pseudo scandals following the same formula. There's debate, missing text messages, a secret society in the FBI. It's one hell of a conspiracy and people at the top levels of our government were involved in it. A secret society, is there anything more about that? No, we have to dig into it. That's, that's, this is not a distraction. There's the reaction. The startling allegations of a secret society. Is there any basis to that claim? Is there a secret society? Those things are troubling. And eventually, there's the reveal. Republican lawmakers are left empty-handed when the texts are found and the secret society is revealed to be a joke. On their own, none of these stories hold water. But together, they help sow doubt in the minds of voters, help build a vague but persistent belief echo. Well, Having possibly a secret society. You know what? Secret society. society. Are we seriously still talking about the secret society, Ben? Which helps explain why so many Republican voters are now suspicious of the FBI, a trend that's gotten worse over the past year. Unsurprisingly, Nunes is already promising to release more memos in the future. He told Brett Baird tonight that more memos are coming. Stay tuned. Tick tock. And the sad thing is, he'll probably generate the same media circus when he does. What politicians say is newsworthy. I am shocked to read exactly what has taken place. Networks can't just ignore them the way that we might block an internet troll. And what makes trolling in politics so effective is that it's almost impossible to prove while it's happening. Charlie can never be sure if Lucy is going to yank the ball away. The audience can never really know if Milo means what he's saying. And journalists can't know if the next Nunes memo is actually a bombshell until he releases it. But what they can do is practice more restraint. To treat these stories not as potential bombshells, but as potential bait. And to be aware of the way that their coverage might be playing into the hands of a troll. Charlie may never be able to resist trying to kick the ball. But if he holds back a little bit, if he avoids kicking quite so hard, he can at least avoid falling flat on his ass. Ah!